Hello guys and gals, they just let me off my mitts today, how's it all going? Ladies and gentlemen, today's video is all about why I think NFTs are disgusting. Stan Lee has been resurrected from the dead to shill NFTs. And you know, this has been a video long been brewing. Let me talk about shilling stuff, okay? For instance, I like G Fuel, I shill this all the time, okay? I like Some Ordinary Podcast. We just made it with Oompy and Nux and I had a good time. We had Critical as our first guest and we have another episode on the way. That's as simple as the shilling's gonna get, okay? What I won't do ever in my YouTube career is sit down and tell you, hey guys, buy a board ape, buy a crypto, buy a JPEG for half a million, woohoo! Because I think that's, I think that's stupid, okay? I think NFTs are a stupid people tax. And you know, somebody's gonna come into the comment section and go, that nude, huh? that's really a fake. Good. Good cry, because you made a dumb choice, all right? God damn. And before somebody says, huh, look at this poor person not owning a board apes, you know what I own instead of a fucking board ape? Land. It's worth more. Anyways, let's get down to the let's get down to the fun story, okay? So to start off with, all right, one of the principal NFT things that got me into it was board apes. Okay, so we talked about crypto punks, we talked about crypto funks, I'm sure. We talked about ability these projects, okay? Every time, every week, there's a new NFT project that comes up. Basically, they take a standard art template. If you ever wonder why NFT art is so shit, it's literally because they take a template. So in some case, they take they take these monkeys. Okay, they replace a few permutations like you see this one's got his mouth open ready to suck one off This one's got like iced out teeth. This one's got a pizza sticking out of the mouth and this one's dead Okay, like my soul inside so to understand these are different permutations There's like ten thousands of these and people pay a varying amount So let's go look at the board apes yacht club Welcome to our collection of ten thousand board ape nfts unique digital collectibles living on the ethereum blockchain Your apes double as your yacht club membership card. I don't believe there's actually a yacht yet, okay? But to understand, this leads to some usability for NFTs, because contrary to popular beliefs, I'm not completely against this shit to begin with. But let's get down to it. So then you get access to the bathroom, a collaborative graffiti book. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was good. All right, so anyways, let's get down to the specs. Each of them is unique and program programmatically generated from over 170 possible trades. Just say procedurally generated. That's all you need to do. Don't need to make it sound any more bigger than it actually is. By that logic, every planet in No Man's Sky is a NFT. But anyways, welcome to the Bored Apes Club. Okay, so you get 10,000 provably rare tokens to buy from. Each of them are 0.08 ETH. Uh, and then the ownership and commercial usage rights are given to you over the NFTs. Whenever you're buying one of these JPEGs, make sure you actually own the rights to share it or like, you know, send it around or use it. Then you get the bathroom, which basically people can draw like every 15 minutes a pixel to make a collaborative art piece, which you can literally read down here. Every ape holder will be able to paint a pixel on the bathroom wall every 15 minutes. Think of it as a collaborative art experiment for the cryptosphere, a members only canvas for the discerning minds of crypto Twitter. We're pretty sure it's going to be full of dicks. So literally the people who are hosting your projects are just memers, okay? You're literally putting your life savings in the hands of memers. The smartest people are the ones who actually run this kind of stuff. So anyways, you go down to the roadmap, 10%, we pay back our moms, okay? So they pay back their moms. We release the caged apes, so five caged apes. Base C gets its own YouTube channel. Members exclusive merch. The clubhouse image becomes interactive and a mysterious note becomes legible, which starts a treasure hunt. Awesome, awesome. Now, of course, you get down to the team. Look, whatever, we can talk about it all we want, but looking at the price tags is a different story. So here is the Bored Apes Yacht Club, okay? Like many other projects, like we looked at CryptoPunks last time. The only reason I'm going hard right now here is this is the newest popular trend. I'm sure in a week or two, it'll switch to another image. But here you can see one of them is bidded for like 0.0069. Like this one has a minimum bid of $1.5 million, okay? To imagine if somebody's gonna buy this for 1.5 million is gonna be hilarious because the offers right now are being put in for $25. Six months, it'll expire. The floor difference is currently 100% below. Now, I don't believe this will actually ever sell, okay? I don't think this is gonna be traded around. When something is selling for 1.5 million, you have to find somebody astronomically fucking stupid to be paying that much for a JPEG effectively.
And of course, it just keeps going down. I filtered it by, what is it, low to high. In fact, if you go from high to low, you can see people putting up like buy it nows for e <laughs> oh, 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 man, I wanna find the idiot paying that price, Jesus. But let's look at recently sold real quick. Let's look at what they were, so this one was recently sold for $175,000, okay? Meaning somebody, Paid the dumb person tax of 175 grand. But sorry, everybody, a little bit of misinfo there. Uh, I said it was sold for 180,000. It was actually offered. That's the the offers going on. Okay, I can put one right here. However, if we look very closely, it was sold for 59 Ethereum from one user to another. A little bit more than what I initially put it at. However, if we look at the price for 59 Ether, that's 226 thousand dollars. Truly an intellectual purchase right there. Mm, brilliant. You might be like, but Muda, what if it's worth? $300,000 next week, okay? To which my response is, have fun finding somebody willing to pay that price, okay? Because realistically, buying these things are easy. Trying to flip them requires a different mind, okay? A little grind set mind, if you will. Now, of course, one of the funnier tweets that I found was like, if you look at their company logo, like, or whatever, the B-B-B-A-C, B-A-Y-C logo, okay? You can see that it bears a striking similarity to a group decades ago that caused some terrible atrocities on mankind. Do I think the Board Apes Yacht Club is going to get us canceled as the Mazzies? I'll leave that up for uh, God to decide, if you will. But let's go look into something that's wild in the NFT space. This guy named Jeffrey Huntley made a website called the NFT Bay, okay? A sea of pirates specifically for the NFT generation. So basically, people right-click NFTs and are like, I saved the image. But what if I told you it's even worse than that? See, on the NFT bay, you can download a 17 terabyte file, okay? I'm not promoting this at all. I don't. You wouldn't right-click an NFT. If you right-click an NFT, you'll make a crypto bro, bro cry. Okay, don't do it. Don't do it. I do not promote right-clicking and saving NFTs. It's wrong, it's stealing, and it's haram. But anyways, if you look down here, you can see that, did you know that NFTs is just a hyperlink to an image that's usually hosted on Google Drive or another Web 2.0 host? People are dropping millions on instructions on how to download images. That's why you can right click save as because they're standard images. The image is not stored on the blockchain contract. Yeah, it isn't, because that would be a large amount of file space to transfer around. As Web 2.0 hosts are known to go offline, 404 errors, this handy torrent contains all the NFTs so that future generations can study this generation's tulip mania and collectively go. So this person's actually downloaded and shared like all the NFTs around. So congratulations, you just got completely right click and saved as. This is the ultimate right click and save as. But it goes to show you how wild these JPEG trends are. Do I think NFTs are going to last forever? I don't know. But the people I talk to always tell me, but Muda, the usability. Now to understand, if you had an NFT that could be used for an actual practical purpose, like for instance, I watch a few awesome podcasts. Charlie makes an amazing podcast called The Official Podcast. And if he had an NFT that allowed me to listen to it earlier on, that would be kind of cool, but I'm pretty sure they do that via Patreon anyways. So realistically, some of the usability is a bit questionable. The only benefit NFTs honestly provide is the potential for not being banned by any platform. But then again, some of the platforms that are selling NFTs will actually remove certain NFT brands simply because they may be problematic. So again, I don't even know how far some of this stuff actually goes. Let's get to something even juicier. Now, since then, beautiful companies like Ubisoft, AAA developers, God bless them that they are, have decided to enter the NFT sphere with plenty of other developers following suit. Now, what is some of the NFT stuff that Ubisoft has done? Well, they've created the Ubisoft Quartz platform. I believe this got ratioed incredibly hard on Twitter and YouTube, but thank God dislikes are disabled. Obviously, we can't see how everyone appears to have loved it on YouTube, I guess. So here they showed you digits. Digits are fancy ways of saying NFTs, but basically they're giving you this tactical rifle. Yes, you can unlock this bargain bin weapon skin underneath Rainbow Ghost Recon Breakpoint, the truly pivotal game that Ghost Recon has ever had. Truly dog shit. But yeah, you can unlock this, and apparently there were 2,000, like, claims. I couldn't get it, so unfortunately I don't have a Ubisoft NFT. But then they also have the Wolf Enhanced Helmet. But here's the juicy part. Global playtime over 600 hours. So it seems like game developers have uncovered the best way to add up their playtime for investors is to just have Crypto Bros leaving the game on for 600 hours. Because there's not 600 hours worth of content in Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Let's be real, okay? But people who have 
have over 600 hours of content get access to this mask, okay? It might as well be a GIMP mask at this point, but you effectively get it, and it's up there for like 61 hours or whatever, or 61... What is, yeah, 61 hours. So if you have over 600 hours, you may be able to get yourself a juicy rare digit. Here we've even got the Wolf Enhanced Pants, which requires a modest 100 hours of playtime, which somebody may actually have put in. But yeah, this is it. Does this enhance gameplay? It makes your character look cooler. And sure, you can probably trade these skins around for real world money, but really it benefits Ubisoft because it has like 250 people with over 600 hours of playtime. They have discovered that if people give up their games after an hour of play, the Crypto Bros will make up for it with 600 hour play times, just for juicy digital NFTs that are probably going to be worth jack shit. But now, one of the things that I always heard was, ah, oh, but what about the play to earn platform, Muda? What if you could use your NFTs to make money with in gaming? You mean like horse betting? That already exists. You can already go horse gambling in the world right now. I don't understand why we needed NFTs, but okay, King. You know, one of the things, that honestly made it sound like something called Salty Bet. If you don't know what Salty Bet was, it's one of the oldest streams on Twitch that are like floating around. But basically, people jump in and watch Mugen gameplay. So it's an open source fighting engine where like they just put random characters in. And people are putting fake money up for grabs. So right now you can see that Dark Ash Coffin has about 458000 dollars put into it. Milia has 325 grand put into it. And of course, you can see a fight's going on. It's a truly fun, harmless way to do it. But of course, the NFT population wants to turn this into a potential for being a super paid platform. And I don't know how I feel about that. It's weird. Now, if you think I'm negative, ladies and gentlemen, on this entire situation, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I'm going to put my headphones on because we're going to listen to what God King Keanu Reeves believes NFTs are like. This is actually from The Verge, and they got like a crypto bro like interviewer going on. Like, they had the full energy. They fell in for the full crypto cult. And Keanu was just not having it. Let's listen to this. Did you guys see the Matrix NFT thing that they did for Resurrections just a couple days ago? They no. Have they made uh, NFTs for the new movie, and there were like 100,000 of them, and the site broke like in the first few hours because there were over 300,000 people in the queue trying to buy these. I love how like that dude is so excited, yet Carrie and Moss and Keanu Reeves are like, <laughs> they just don't care. Keanu's like, he's trying to process the stupidity right now. It's like, what? <laughs> let's go. NFTs for $50. Um, and so like when you think about the concept of digital scarcity and things that are, you know, they can't be copied. That are easily reproduced. <laughs> well, <laughs> but they're not the <laughs> Oh, I love Keanu Reeves, man. He, he keeps it straight, man. I love this boy. <laughs> he just dies laughing. Same, right? It's not a fake version of you. I wonder what our, do we get a cut of that? Oh no, I don't, actually, I don't think we're in him. They're just joking. Do we get a cut of that, bro? They're just literally laughing it off like no tomorrow. But see, that's like the general normal person's perception of it. Anybody that hasn't been absorbed by the cult yet. Now, let's move on to what the actual video is really the title of, because this is real juicy. Stanley died, okay, years ago. Stanley was a creator of some of our favorite characters that we grew up with, okay? Now, apparently it seems like either Stan Lee's, somebody is posting on Stan Lee's behalf, or it seems like Stan Lee may have come back to life with this emergingly amazing technology known as NFT. And Stan Lee said from champion seven hours ago by seven hours ago, Stan Lee from championing diversity to embracing new tech, Stan was one step ahead of the curve to honor his innovative spirit. Stan's first Indian hero, Jocka the Invincible. Oh, debuts in his own NFT digital art collection from 730 p.m. Are you, are you are you dead inside? Yeah, let's get into the Chakraverse IO, okay? So anyways, we, we can click on Chakraverse and just kind of cry a little bit. Of course, you can see that Stan Lee has been getting ratioed in the grave. This is the first man to be dead and getting ratioed on Twitter. Imagine that. But here you can see that this comes from the Orange Comet crew. I don't even know if they have the rights for this shit. I honestly don't. This is hilarious. If I if I was Stan Lee's estate, I would sue the living... If I die and somebody uses an NFT to promote me... Stop that, okay? I don't promote it. You can have this on video right now. But anyways, welcome to the Chakraverse, Stan Lee's Chakra the Invincible. Don't freak out. From what I heard, this video is all the way back After from After writing like... superheroes like Iron Man, Spider-Man, the X-Men, the Avengers, and many more, I'm proud to present my newest superhero, Chakra the Invincible, to all my fans around the world. 
Experience the action-packed adventures of Chakra the Invincible from Graphic India. Did not mention anything about NFTs, but they went with it. Determined to unlock the secrets of human potential through science, Raju and his mentor, the scientist Dr. Singh, develop a technology suit that activates the mystical chakras of the body. Well, you pick chakras because we're Indian? Get that, get out of here, some Naruto shit, loser. And then you get down over here, so about the drop. But anyways, it's a blind purchase. It's a loot box, so they're mixing two of the worst things imaginable into the same option. But what I love is the art previews, okay? Because this is like the epitome of dark shit NFT art. So here we've got some beast. Here we've got Indian Man, okay? We got Indian Fantastic Four. We've got Indian Doctor Strange. We've got Indian Girl generic Flash character. Oh, we definitely just went full Indian here. Indian Beast Boy. And then what might possibly be a sin against humanity. We've got Stan Lee in cartoon form sold as NFTs. Man, if, you, if, if this man could see what was going on in the plane of existence, he would be performing RPMs in the grave, bro. This guy would be like a Mustang GT spinning around in the grave right now. It would be sad. But they're also giving comic books, I guess, legendaries, seven chakra powers, auctions. You see, a lot of it is just going to be crowded up by crypto bros. They're not going to do anything with it, really. Their closest video was from a TED Gateway in 2013, okay? Stanley had nothing to do with it. Leave the man alone, let him rest. <laughs> I'm glad they're doing KYC checks and performing with all anti-money laundering and KYC regulations. They already know how shady this industry can get. So they're already trying to make sure that they got their T's crossed and their I's dotted for the SEC or anybody. My credit card was a decline, what should I do? I hope that <laughs> many credit card companies require extra security verification for NFT purchases. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they would do that. That's really wild. I love the first set of frequently asked questions is, why is this such a shady thing to purchase? And how can I make sure that I can get past all of the checks and balances? You know, I'm going to end this video off. I think this is disgusting and terrible. And frankly, it's probably going to work. You know, my philosophy on NFTs is not non-fungible tokens. I believe NFTs, in my mind, stands for no fucking thanks. Because this is, without a doubt, some of the saddest, most craziest stuff that I've ever seen. And, you know, this mania is going to keep on going forever until some level of, like, actual regulation kicks in. I think the technology is cool, but I think the way that it's implemented right now is kind of bad. And it honestly makes the whole world of crypto and NFTs look really shady. And the problem is I, as a person that initially loved this technology, finds out that I'm losing love for it simply because of how much it's being used and abused in the space around us. You wonder why people don't want regulations and maybe it's because of all the money being traded around? I don't know. But the reality of all of this is, is that w with a really cool technology like crypto and NFT, it's a shame that you got people jumping in to really take advantage of the most gullible. Because I personally believe at the moment, this is like a stupid person tax. And hey, maybe I'm gonna miss out on millions upon millions of dollars. Maybe I'm gonna make a bad investment decision. Maybe that'll be me in the future. But for me as a slow and low like person in the world, I really can't see myself ever purchasing any of these goddamn JPEGs. But you know, to each their own. If you wanna be part of this universe, then by all means, Take it upon yourself. You're an adult. You've got your own responsibilities. But I would say, ask a financial advisor. Ask somebody who actually knows anything about finances before you choose to dump your life savings into this garbage. And for anybody who's using NFTs and using a dead person's name to push onto it, guys, all right, let 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 Stanley rest. Okay, and Ubisoft, if I ever see Tom Clancy being used to pimp some NFTs for Rainbow Six Siege, I'm gonna cry. I'm already playing the game less, it is it, less as it is. I might even remove it completely if that ever happens. And you know, given what I've just seen with Ubisoft, God, I don't want another Splinter Cell anymore. I think I would be devastated to see how that would turn out. But you know, this is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.